Hey everyone, I'm Fox at Foxy Games UK. Follow me via Twitter at Foxy Games underscore UK as seen in the bottom right of your screen. Make us your regular aggregate source of news, rumour and video game discussion and home to the Gamer Couch podcast. Live every Sunday, 12pm PST, 3pm ET and 8pm BST. All links can be found in this video's description. So in our first segment of news, the developer behind Alan Wake has confirmed two games are in development, with one of the titles codenamed P7, but the good news doesn't end there. Remedy is breaking its 10-year close ties with Microsoft and the Xbox platform, confirming today the company is working on bringing both projects to the PlayStation 4. Remedy, based in Finland, Europe, has had a long relationship with Microsoft and the Xbox with Alan Wake and Quantum Break being console exclusive to Xbox 360 and Xbox One respectively. But that all changes with the mysterious sounding Project P7. Now, due to underwhelming sales on some of the company's earlier titles such as Alan Wake and Sequel, and to get their games out to a wider audience, the studio is branching out, confirming they are working to re-engineer their very impressive North Light engine for PS4, the very same engine that powered last year's Xbox One and Windows 10 release, Quantum Break. Quantum Break being the first title to utilize the technology which proved to be a huge success for Remedy, with the company earning 16.4 million euros during its last financial year. Now, as I reported well over six months ago, Remedy previously hinted that Alan Wake 2 could end up on the PS4 if Microsoft didn't make moves to pick up the sequel, but so far nothing has been confirmed. Back in the days of PS2 and OG Xbox, Remedy worked on the uber-successful Bullet Time Matrix-styled Max Payne franchise. Stay tuned for more on Remedy's upcoming PS4 game as and when more information comes to light. And in other news, courtesy of our friends over at PushSquare.com, is it time for Sony to take PS4 Pro more seriously? Or is Sony being too laxed with its mandate for third-party support for PS4 Pro enhancements? So Sony released the PS4 Pro last year, and it's a good iterative console, designed to take existing PS4 games and push them to the next level. The system has generally achieved its aims by bumping resolutions, effects and other features depending on the developer's direction. So the manufacturer's goal was never to change the base experience, just to elevate it to the next level for people who demand more or already own a 4K panel. But the company's approach to the console has been rather odd, albeit understandable. Cast your mind back to September. September's coming out party, a traditional turgid press conference where the firm learned that it's perhaps impossible to demonstrate the advantage of iterative hardware via a low resolution stream. The presentation was muted and without fanfare it turned many people off the platform before they even had a chance to see it in action. It's hard to shake that impression sometimes and Sony scared to talk up the advantages of its supercharged system it doesn't want to upset or irritate owners of the base PS4. The companies made it very clear that the PS4 Pro is an iterative step forward, an optional purchase that's desirable but ultimately unnecessary. But here's the thing. In doing so, it's almost certainly undersold the PS4 Pro bigly, inadvertently giving the impression among consumers and the media that it's not such a huge deal to upgrade from the base PS4. But with Microsoft's next console, Project Scorpio, promising a vast array of upgrades including, but not limited to, true native 4K, increased RAM, the competition is certainly going to make a whole lot of noise about it and the benefits of upgrading from the Xbox One to Xbox Scorpio. Now, in spite of Microsoft taking steps to assure existing Xbox One users that there'll be no exclusive content on Scorpio, there's plenty of confusion from consumers and the gaming press as to whether Xbox Scorpio is an entirely new generation of hardware. So the specifications are certainly a year more advanced than those found in PS4 Pro, but it's not enough to reset the gaming clock, nor do the people over at Microsoft want it to. So the difference then is in approach. Phil Spencer and his team, perhaps with their backs against the wall, have painted the console in a new light and certainly different from what Sony is doing with PS4 Pro, where the latter has almost embarrassingly launched its own device, the former is eager to make the biggest and largest splash as possible. You could argue that with sales trends going the way they are, Microsoft has nothing to lose, but it begs the question, when is Sony going to take its own console seriously? 
Now I think you need to consider the upcoming event E3 2017. Everybody's waiting and this is where the battle lines between these mid-generation boxes will certainly be drawn. Sony for the most part has continued to show games running on the base hardware. Horizon Zero Dawn's trailers were generally restricted to the core console experience and even pre-release there was a big embargo restricting the media on how much PS4 Pro footage could be shown. Does this mean that the June convention will follow a similar format? Here's a question to consider. Now the Japanese giant will certainly show off God of War during its press conference, but which will it show off? Common sense prevails and suggests Sony will demo the best version, but that's not how the console giant has handled the PS4 Pro so far. The question becomes even more interesting when you consider that there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever when it's the inevitable Forza 7, Crackdown 3 or any other game that Microsoft will always show the Project Scorpio version moving forwards. So what does Sony need to do? Well, does it continue to stick with its current strategy where it's almost embarrassed to show the PS4 Pro version in fear of frightening those who still play on the base unit? Or does it go toe to toe with its rivals over at Microsoft and always put its best foot forward? It's an interesting dilemma, but one that needs to be resolved. And in Push Square's opinion, with stern competition on the way, it certainly needs to stop pussyfooting around and underselling the PS4 Pro's potential and start talking it up a bit more. But is it too late to change a perception that it's already mistakenly established. Do you think that Sony needs to start taking the PS4 Pro a bit more seriously now that there's competition hot on its heels or do these mid-generation boxes appeal really to a small subset of hardcore gamers that it's not really such a big deal? Which console will the company use to demo its E3 2017 showcase titles? And that's pretty much where the excellent Push Square article ends. And as expected, I'm going to give my views on the whole PS4 Pro game development situation. Now here's the thing. I know a lot of people in the game community believe the major and not so major media outlets give Sony a free pass. Do not criticize the company enough. While that's certainly a perception, though it must be taken into consideration that Microsoft have had the, the bulk of screw-ups this generation almost exclusively of their own doing. You could say the firm has been the author of their own misfortune. But anyway, I'm going to give my point of view. Now, in my humble opinion, Sony do seem overly concerned with upsetting the standard PS4 users, but Sony can deliver on both PS4 platforms and must push harder on PS4 Pro to entice customers to spend the extra cash on the updated version of the company's best ever selling record-breaking hardware. Now, while Sony are delivering 4K with great results on their own first-party titles such as Horizon Zero Dawn, Uncharted 4, the upcoming The Last of Us Part 2, the aforementioned God of War, GT Sport and Days Gone. I could go on, but we only have a finite amount of time. But the company really does need to ensure third-party developers and publishers are taking the mandate seriously. Ubisoft's Watch Dogs 2 and The Division with the latter actually presenting a full-on native 4K image. Then there's EA's Titanfall 2, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Bethesda's Skyrim Special Edition and Fallout 4, Rise of the Tomb Raider by Crystal Dynamics and the list goes on. There are many other titles already making very good use of the 4K display technology found in the PS4 Pro, but criminally the company's own visually impressive drive club did not get any PS4 Pro attention. Instead, Sony delivered a massively scaled back VR mode. As good as that was, it's just not good enough. Now, PS4 Pro enhancements are there across a variety of games, so it's hardly a major issue at this conjecture. But some titles are slipping through the net in spite of Sony's own mandate that all games released after October 2016 must feature a PS4 Pro enhancement mode. Notable titles either missing PS4 Pro features entirely or just half-assed enhancements are Persona 5, which has seemingly no enhancements at all. And users are reporting via social media that the rare styled platformer Ukulele is another offender with zero PS4 Pro enhancements. And worse still is Overwatch, having a 4K UI but little else. I mean, why even bother, right? So people are starting to take notice, especially given Microsoft's recently revealed Xbox Scorpio spec that seems to have a very stricter mandate and has a lot of work that developers would really need to do actually baked into the hardware and not a software solution like Sony has opted for. But in fairness, 
Microsoft have had plenty of time to see what the competition is doing and obviously took some of PS4 Pro's design cues and improved upon them. That's one of the benefits of launching one year after the competition. But Sony must pay attention. They must not get complicit. Because before you know it, guess what? Come next generation, you will not be in first place anymore. So Alan, wake the up. Now before I go, Sega's Bayonetta related countdown has been revealed and it's probably going to disappoint a lot of console users expecting a Bayonetta 1 or 2 remaster or remake or even a third entry into the third person action franchise. No, Bayonetta for PC has been announced in full on 4K 60 frames per second. But all is not lost as even better news for PS4 users is that the Uncharted The Lost Legacy now has a confirmed release date and it's August 22nd in North America which likely translates to August 25th in the EU and UK. But go ahead let us know in the comments on all of today's news stories and this unfortunately brings us to the end of another video. It's always fun hanging out with you all but count on Foxy Games UK to keep you in the game and keep your eyes glued to this channel for more news, rumour and discussion on everything gaming on all platforms. If you found any of the information in this video at all useful go ahead and hit the like button and if you haven't already subscribe and share the content. You can also help us grow and support us via Patreon Starting from just one dollar, you'll find the link in this video's description. And always remember, my filthy neutrals, play games, not corporations.